Hello everyone and welcome back to my career playthrough in Junonia Origins. People in the comments suggested that I attempt docking, and so I am going to do so. But first I'm going to make sure that my controls are set up basically exactly the same way as I have in Kerbal Space Program, so I don't pull my hair out trying to do things differently or trying to remember a different mapping. So, up is going to be I, down K, right L, left J, forward H, backward N. And so that's how I'm going to use that so that we can do the translation as we approach the dock. Yeah, let's just go with a new craft. Okay, now that this is all nice and clean, I will put a docking port there. Okay. And we will go to the requirement of the docking port, which is 0.4 meters apparently. And we'll dot two identical things together. And they will be essentially flying fuel tanks. So we've got a little spirit engine. Uh, this right now is one ton. Uh, having them be one ton is not too bad, considering our rockets so far. Pressure-fed care locks is sort of doubling as our hypergolic systems, because the mod propellant it doesn't seem to be anywhere near that level. Hypergolic systems don't seem to pop up here, so pressure-fed care locks is what I'm using as my hypergolic system. And 400 newtons is more than enough for that. And this is a vacuum-optimized sort of thing. 1.22 kilometers per second. It depends on where we're getting to. I will say that we're gonna eventually push this out to KK. So, uh, maybe I want a little bit more than that. But then mod propellant would make it easier for us to just use that for the... for the RCS fuel we need for docking, but uh, I like having little round tanks at the bottom anyway, so... If I can... Apparently... Hmm... Apparently these don't surface attach, is there... It says enable this attach point for consideration when placing parts. It's supposed to have a surface attach point. Well, it's not... it's attaching to that node there. Yeah, okay, we're gonna have to have some other attach point, I think. So much for having little uh, spherical fuel tanks. Um, maybe I mean it doesn't uh, look. It doesn't have one of those nodes at the top either. This one clearly has one on the sides, and then one at the top there. Okay. Well, we have mod propellant tanks, so we need RCS ports, and I I just don't like the gimbling RCS ports. That's just me. In fact, I would turn the gimbling off if I could. And then just use them for the looks. I suppose for RCS ports, the rule would be that whatever your tonnage is, multiply by mm, 10 to 20 newtons. So these are way OP right now, but even if I turn them all the way to the bottom, they're 50 newtons. Which is more than enough for a one-ton thing. Uh, for instance, the space shuttle, which is about 80 tons, needs its RCS to get into the atmosphere, but its RCS is only 2 kilonewtons. So, it's pushing more like closer to 30 newtons per ton, but uh, that's because it's re-entering under their power, so... And, you know, they're use, uh, using the RCS control to re-enter. So, yeah. We really don't need that much. Now, placing the forward-facing ones, I guess... I don't know if we it's legal to mount it on the docking port. Oh, I didn't want to do that. But we, uh... We're gonna effectively mount it on the docking port. Just so I don't have to have them stick out, and I don't know if it's going to cause any problems, but... Makes it look better. Um, 
those little blocks are too big. Now, apparently we're supposed to be able to size them. I'm showing advanced properties. Show resize gizmos. Part shape. No shapeable part selected. I mean, it's a pretty useless block like this. So yeah, maybe in theory it's resizable, I just can't find where the heck that might be. So, fuel tanks again. This is just so that the RCS ports don't look like they're sticking out of nowhere. Oh, uh, let's just copy the ones we already have. And it looks like the, um, these tanks are universal, but I'll put a few line anyway. Okay, so that is our setup for a dockable thingamajig, but I might add some... I mean, it's pretty expensive right now, mainly because of the RCS ports. Uh, the docking port's probably pretty expensive, too. Um, 58,000. Uh, but I'll put some solar panels as well. It would be interesting to have a reusable stage at this point, but bringing up fuel is gonna take basically the same thing anyway, so we might as well relaunch it. There's no in-C2 resource utilization in the game yet, as far as I know, so there's no benefit to having a reusable stage. Let's see... Well, that adds hardly any cost at all. It's 40 bucks. 40 buck solar panel. Okay. Uh, in fact, let's have it all the way around if it's that cheap. Shall we even paint it for once? Uh, they've got some themes here. Apparently that's a dragon theme. I don't know why that's Gen X, but... Okay, I don't understand how to paint things. It's fine. It's not a critical thing. Alright, so we've got 1.23 kilometers per second here. Is that enough to do what we want to do? Well, we'll find out. Maybe I, I want a little bit more mob propellant because we're docking and everything. We're not just turning. Okay, so we just need to get this thing into orbit now. And we'll put the entire thing into a fairing. And then a nice fairing, cozy fairing. Doing things properly, finally. Hey, let's do 1.25. I feel like maybe the electric power cycle should be consuming a whole lot more power. It says power usage 31.8 kilowatts. I would think that that would need a lot more battery, but last time it didn't. Okay, well, even though we probably don't need it, I'm gonna put... No, oh, I, I wanted it the same size as the upper stage one, though. Um, we're gonna put nine engines down here. To make it like an electron rocket from Rocket Lab. Oh, well, it's a busy bottom section right there. Let's see if we can make the upper one a little bit smaller so it's a little bit less packed. It looks like we need... 42 after all. That's a lot of extra thrust-weight ratio on the first stage, though. But maybe that's okay. I'm actually gonna call this the Electron Rocket, because it's basically facsimile. The thrust is a little bit higher. But it can carry a ton to orbit, I think. So, that's good. Let's see... Safe craft. We've been calling our craft new for a while now. Electron. And that'll be good for launching CubeSats too. Alright. Well, we'll test how this Electron rocket works. We're gonna launch two of them and then dock the things together. Now, we're launching from the village pad, so the things are gonna have an inclination. It's not gonna be equatorial. And that'll make things a little bit more interesting. 1.9 million, so it's gonna cost us a bit. Um, I'm not carrying a CubeSat on this. We'll just do it as a straight docking thing and trying to get tech points from the TT. So, with that being said, let's launch this. Um, oh, it's too tall though. Uh, 
it's too tall. We should launch it horizontally and launch it from the village runway. Um, Alipad. That one's equatorial, this DSC one. Alright, well, I will have some inclination, but we'll have to do it from the alley pad. Just because it's so tall and I want to keep it that way. Um, yeah, not exactly what I wanted, but we'll go with it. It's very expensive to launch from there. Okay. Throttle is working. And... Docking, no activity. We'll see about that. And I do want the lock current heading. Okay, and I don't want the RCS enabled yet. Alright. And with that, we're nice and lined up this time, so I don't even have to do a roll program. So, launch. And it's feisty. We have to turn relatively quickly. In fact, we might want to throw down here. Oh, the battery is depleting. Uh-oh. So we will have to carry more battery. I didn't notice that before, but now with nine of these engines, I suppose. Okay, we're doomed. At least, hopefully we'll get over to water, right? Very nice arc it's producing, though. Oh, well, let's uh, just... I bet the, the engine on here doesn't have uh, enough sea level thrust to do anything. Well, Drag is doing some stuff, but not enough. And... wait. It hit the bottom of the water. Okay. Recover craft. Money awarded zero, though. Oh, uh, recovery bonus 170. Okay. Well, we got some back. Alright, more battery power. No, not that. Kilowatt hours. That's a lot. Relaunch checks confirmed. And launch. Two parts taking heat damage. Mage engine. Oh, they're, they're clustered too much together. Well, I could lose a few engines right now, actually. It won't be a problem. Uh, okay, we lost an engine. <laughs> Electron rocket. Very exciting. <laughs> We might need to put some of the heat tolerance on them. There's some like heat coating that you can add to parts. We might need some of that. I think we're okay for orbit though. So yeah, as far as trying to not overshoot is concerned, what you want is the time to apoapsis. We're actually a little bit low right now. Let me go back to the prograde vector. Um, and uh, often I'll take the stage burn time, which is 2.3 minutes, divide by 2, and that's the time to apoapsis I want. And I'll just try and keep to that by pitching. So here we need to pitch up because the stage burn time is longer than the time to apoapsis. But if it's shorter, you can pitch down. You can even go into negative pitch, pitch towards the ground a bit. Some rockets do do, do that. And then also, if you're overshooting, you can always thrall down. That'll increase your stage burn time. To compensate for the fact that you have too much time to apoapsis. The pitching down below the horizon it tends to be for engines that can't throttle, so you're probably not going to do it in this game. In real life, oops, clicked out a bit. Uh, in real life, they have to do that because their engines don't throttle. You can see the vertical velocity getting close to zero. That's what we want as we're coming close to apoapsis. And then if you do that, you can get whatever resulting apoapsis you want. This becomes the periapsis. This 108 kilometers becomes the periapsis. 
and then if you hit apoapsis right when your vertical speed is close to zero, it doesn't have to be exactly, but and you can keep it this way by pitching or throttling and or throttling. And then you can get whatever periap uh, well resulting apoapsis that you want. So I'll leave it higher just a little bit. And it's like that. Now, if we launched immediately, it'd be pretty easy from this launch site. There won't be too much inclination. But if we were launching from the village launch pad, it'd be out of whack uh, if we launched immediately. But uh, you can see right now the launch site is actually just a little bit south of our orbit right now already. And then over time, it'll get further like that. What we would want is... Well, let's deploy the... Um, we should have deorbited this stage. Hmm. I'm going to go to Apoapsis, deorbit this stage, and then do the rest. We have a lot of extra battery power, actually, but I think it's recharging. No, maybe not. Hmm. My calculations were apparently not correct. I thought this was an uh, electric pump-fed engine as well. But, of course, there's only one. Uh, so, yeah, I calculated for if the entire time we were using all ten. That's right. We can reduce some of the battery. We gotta deorbit the stage so that it isn't hanging out. Okay, that should be pretty firmly done with. And then we're going to use the RCS probate. Oh, well, okay, I don't like how it does that. Stop. <laughs> Well, we've used a lot of mod propellant here. We'll try to avoid that next time. Well, I hope that's the right staging. This one says it's got 39.1 minute burn time. And it says it's only 700 meters per second right now. I hope that eventually changes. <laughs> we were supposed to have 1.2. Okay, now it says 1.1 kilometers per second. Okay, there's a nice high orbit for a rendezvous. So, okay. And our launch site is here. Again, we could probably launch right away and it'd be alright. Why don't we just do it that way? Uh, the other way would be to wait for this to get right in line with the orbit again. But I might as well do an inclination change to demonstrate that. It's It'll be somewhat costly, but not a huge amount. It might hurt our ability to get to KK though. You know what, let me just do it the proper way. Okay, I mean, I don't think it's gonna get any closer. I, I guess this is... Where, uh, I think it's the other marker below it, and I'm just not seeing it right. Okay, yeah, I, I think we'll just launch it like this. So uh, let's go back to, let's say, safe flight. And we will just launch another one of these, actually. I should have checked the RCS thrusters to make sure they were working right. Okay, well, first things first. We've got this little electron, and we should set it as our target. Don't know if I'm gonna get all the information I would like. We'll see. All right, throttle up and that RCS off. Okay, and go. We could have waited until it was ahead of us. That would have been better. We could contrive to meet with it directly by throttling down and taking longer, making sure that we get to this point here, or let's say that point there, when it's going to get there. I forgot to put on the heat shielding on the engines. That's another reason to like throttle down at this point, I suppose. So the target has a 100 kilometer periapsis. Okay, staging. 
I also didn't reduce the battery power, but we weren't short of Delta V for orbit anyway. Uh, we're probably a little bit slow. Which is fine. We're going into a low, we'll go into a lower orbit first, and let's make that change, and then adjust. And we're probably not going to meet its inclination right now either, so let's just head east for now. Here, I've flattened out a little bit too early, because we re already reached Apoapsis, so I'll tilt up. Uh, we can sort of hang out at Apoapsis for an extended period of time, really. We just need to keep the vertical speed about the same. You can see us and the target are hardly moving with respect to each other right now. Well, that is a little bit lopsided compared to what I want, but... Okay. So here you can see the relative inclination really playing out, and so we are going to need to correct that when our orbits cross. We can do it on this side. And... We should right now be catching up. It's in front of us. I wanted to deorbit the stage, but it's probably not a big deal, and we can use its delta V. We're ahead of it already, so that's not great. We need to get into a slower orbit, which is a higher orbit now. I won't use RCS to stabilize, so I'll just use the engine. Now it's giving additional information about our approach info. Okay, uh, so we can take lock heading off and we're going to go prograde, lift our orbit up so that it can catch up now. Um, we won't do that here though. We'll do, do it where our orbits are really close over there. So let's wait. Around here would be best. You can see it reducing the relative velocity there, and we want the encounter here. Uh, a little bit more. I can probably deal with 5 kilometers. I wouldn't want it more than 10 kilometers. And it's just going up. All right. At this point, I'll get rid of this stage. Yep. Okay, we RCS'd ourselves out. Okay, going around. Okay, so we want the negative target vector and the negative velocity vector. That's the negative target vector. And that's the negative velocity vector. We're gonna push the negative velocity vector to the negative target vector. So we're gonna go on the opposite side of the green one. So our relative velocity is going down, but we should also be getting closer to the target. And I'm not gonna lock heading or anything. I'll let it float because I'm going to make adjustments. We don't want it to be too far away from the green vector. Let's see if our... Our approach info is not doing as well as I'd like, actually. So I'm going to put more distance away from me, between me and the negative velocity vector, so that the approach gets closer. I'm going off kilter a little bit because part of it's just the curvature of the planet. Beak, I can't see the nu uh, numbers. All right. Uh, two kilometers is okay. Let's just go with that approach right there. And I don't want to use extra RCS, so I'm just going to li leave it spinning. Now, in time warp, it's going to stop spinning anyway. But even if uh, time warp didn't stabilize it, I would just leave it spinning. Okay, same idea. But because of the curvature of the planet, eventually things are going to deviate away from each other and we have to correct. 
With Earth, that's actually less of a problem. It's easier to rendezvous with stuff around Earth because Earth's curvature is much wider, and so you have plenty of time to approach without it messing things up for you. Because we used so much mob propellant to approach with this, I'll use the other one to do the docking. The stage time with these is a little bit unfortunate, though. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to redo... I'm, I don't think we're going to TT with things that have such a huge burn time. Oh, this is the wrong way around. Shoot. That's the prograde vector. The vectors look way too similar. I would like like something a little bit more definitive, like one being filled in, or an X or something. Anything, please. There's just too subtle a difference. We'll just kill relative velocity and then uh, I'd rather fix, uh, rather do the docking in daylight. Okay, well, with some daylight. I'm just gonna have this side point at the target. Since this is almost out of mob propellant, because I used mob propellant to do some of the burns. Um, but I'll also have it move towards the target a little bit. Um, let's... Okay, I switch to this one. Now this one needs to target the other one. Okay. We want to sort of visualize how parallel is, and then move our... Oh, uh, we need stabilization too. Uh, okay, this is not working quite right. Oh, orbit. Uh, target. Right. But it's still rotating us. Hmm, stabilization is not great. It doesn't keep the orientation well. Okay, well that's gonna complicate matters. You can see uh, our uh, sort of sideways efforts still rotate the craft. And that takes extra RCS. Even though I put the thrusters that are doing that on the center line, to avoid them doing that, just them being a little bit off uses a lot more RCS than I thought they would. Hmm. Well, we're gonna have to rethink this a little bit. I'm using main thrust to try and move us towards it again. So I'm trying to pull the prograde vector over. And then I'm going to slow down here. Uh, we're going too fast. Uh. Right. Other side. Uh, yeah, we don't. We just don't have enough. I think. Um, let's. We now have none. <laughs> it says. That's it, it's tumbling. Uh, we can use the time warp trick. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. We just don't have enough mob propellant, it's not gonna work. I underestimated how much I would need because I thought that the stabilization system would be able to handle it. It's been pretty good. 
keeping us stable. Right now, either we just happen to boink it, or we won't boink it. And that's it, because we have no more mod propellant. Oh yeah, we're gonna miss. Okay, so I underestimated how bad this was gonna be. Clearly. We're on mod propellant with these two, for sods. Um, I'm gonna deorbit both of them. So that we don't have trash lying around. So, uh, to that end, we can still turn by a thrust, after all. Maybe I should just knock into the other one. There are ways to contrive a docking with the engine. These are fairly weak engines at 400 newtons, so... That's not impossible, but... We won't do that this time. We'll have to review the center of mass of the thrusters, uh, of the body, so that we can place the thrusters properly a little bit better. We'll certainly move them closer to the center of mass since it's so hard to keep it stable otherwise. Um, okay, uh, can I switch like this? Okay. Let's deal with this one now. I mean, an expensive experiment, but uh, not one that we don't have enough money for. And so next time, we'll try again. But I think we'll deploy some CubeSats too. Alright, well, as we watch this meet its fiery demise. Art's taking heat damage. Alright, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.